Hi and welcome to another edition of London's Fashion Alphabet. My name is Jahan Dyer, I'm a PhD student here at the Museum of London and Royal Holloway, University of London. Today we've reached the letter Q, and for me that can't mean anything other than the famous fashion designer Mary Quant. Mary Quant is practically synonymous with the London of the swinging 60s, and that's the period after the Second World War when Britain was hit by a so-called youthquake. Quan opened her first boutique called Bazaar on the King's Road in Chelsea in 1955. She radically shortened hemlines, used vibrant colour palettes, and quite importantly, she started using men's tailoring techniques and fabrics in her early designs. Her innovations in design and retail have had an immense impact on fashion, and especially ready-to-wear fashion as we know it today. But she also has a really special connection with this museum, the Museum of London. In 1973, she was the subject of the last ever exhibition held at this museum's predecessor, the London Museum, which was then housed at Kensington Palace. Mary Quant's London, as the exhibition was titled, showed about 50 looks, and it talked about her career set against a backdrop of the recent social changes that had affected London after the war. It was the most contemporary exhibition that the museum had held in its 60-year history by that point. We're used to big-name fashion exhibitions now, but at that time it was so radical that Mary Quant had even said it seemed as though she was already dead. We have a few of the pieces shown in the exhibition here, and these are great because you can also see photographs of how they were displayed in the exhibition itself. So here is one of the earliest designs. Um, it's a 1957 Harris Tweed dress. But this is a really interesting piece because it shows that early take on menswear that Mary Quant was trying to bring into women's wear. So it really resembles that kind of country wear look, but she was restyling these, you know, big pockets and, and belt and this kind of boyish straight figure for a new class of young urban women. We can see the evolution of those masculine tailoring motifs in this black PVC raincoat, which is one of my favourite pieces from the collection. It's a 1963 design, and it was named after Christopher Robin, who's one of the Winnie the Pooh characters. Again, we've got those masculine touches, the large pockets that would sit at the side, the belt. So it's fully lined in gingham, which is quite surprising compared with this, what was at the time a very new fabric to be used as PVC. So the raincoat was displayed with a fantastic sou'wester hat which tied beneath the chin and also these brilliant glossy wellies. Another object shown in the exhibition that I really love is this pair of platform sandals made in leather um, in red and green and that they could just as easily be worn today. But they hold a really powerful trace of the exhibition which is quite unique to all of these objects. If you just see here, there's a square hole quite crudely cut out in the sole. And that's where the spigot, the rod that holds the mannequin up, um, would have been put through. So that happened before it was acquired, still something we wouldn't do today. But I think it just shows a really nice touch of how objects also have a life after they enter the museum um, as well as before. The exhibition was designed by another important swinging London figure. That's Michael Haynes, who's an artist, um, a designer and visual merchandiser. And he had actually created some of the bizarre windows um, back in the kind of early 60s that was so famously surreal. The gallery design was centred around these kind of shop window displays and that was a really revolutionary approach for a museum to take at that time but it didn't come without its critics. It was accused by some for being too commercial, for being an advert for the Mary Quant brand, so much so that museum staff received concerns from Her Majesty's Treasury saying that um, they didn't want public money being spent on advertising an active brand. This photo shows what would be the Mary Quant woman's ideal bedroom in 1974. It has Quant bedding, Quant curtains, Quant mugs, dolls, and that's not forgetting the 1974 outfit of a dress, jacket, and turban. Another of the show's latest pieces, which was a tie, was actually stolen from the display case before the cover could be put over it. Despite the criticism it faced, Mary Quant's London was actually really well received. With its innovative approaches and vibrant gallery design, it's also an important ancestor of the blockbuster fashion exhibitions that we know and love to visit in huge numbers today. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of London's Fashion Alphabet. Tune in for the next episode coming soon on the letter R.